What up my freaks, Ruana Sensite here with part 18 of my Total War Warhammer 3 Kairos Fateweaver Mortal Empires campaign. So as we saw last time, we have neatly bisected the territories of the Cult of Sigmar and Talakwa, indeed taking Talakwa itself and defeating Tic-Tac-Toe in a nice little ambush teleportation by Kairos. We also achieved the uh, short campaign victory, which powers up our armies by giving them a permanent plus 30 winds of magic per turn, so we can expect them to have full winds pretty much whatever they do. We're looking pretty good. Uh, unfortunately, one thing that didn't quite work out is the plan of of using Thorek as a distraction towards our north. He instead decided to march on Karaga Rud instead and will probably be attacking it shortly. A little bit unfortunate, but what can you do? Plans don't always work out. If they did, it wouldn't really be all that much fun, would it? Now, what are we going to do this turn? Let's just see what we have here. Teratus, you still have to make your way towards Kairos, who will be stopping at the Sun Tree Glades. So, so we'll send you there. Now I actually think... What exactly are we going to delete from here? I mean, in theory, Kairos is going to lose these Chaos Warriors of Tsinch. I suppose what we could do if we wanted to is move Ivor Rune Smasher here, or at least nearby. And... Well, that would also mean abandoning Bagar potentially to Curtis attacking it. You can't attack Curtis from here, can you, Ivor? No. Hmm... And these armies are probably too weak to attack Bagar, but, you know, together they might be able to pull something off. Yeah, okay, we'll ignore this for now then with uh, you, but you, Iber, are going to go right here into ambush. If this guy decides to siege it, then maybe you can attack him. Keep moving around, keep protecting this territory. Of course, that would mean that you might move from Suntree Glades toward Antok, but then Hyber can move back towards there. A little bit of an annoying state of affairs for him, but his reinforcing army is on the way. I also decided to uh, switch out one of those pink cores for a uh, Chaos Warrior of Zinch, so that we'll have eight units, because after all, Iber has the Grimsbane ability, which buffs up infantry, and uh, while well, melee infantry is the order of the day for that particular army. Anyway. That looks good to me, but there are a few more things that we want to do here. Changing of the ways, I think it's time to force a war between Grimgore and Karazakarak. I was thinking that it was going to happen itself, but apparently they didn't want to fight, so why not? We'll spend that 2,000, uh, 2000 Grimoires on this and continue getting Grimgore as many enemies as possible. He currently still is the number one faction on the map. And uh, with 31 settlements, quite strong. So let's just keep forcing him to fight everybody we can. Just surround him by enemies so that we don't have to deal with him until we've taken all the lands of the dead, probably parts of the Badlands, and then maybe moved out as well. I do also want to get another army to send to the Eastern Colonies, but that's a uh, that's a thought for another day. Anyway, Force War. And there we go. Grimgore and Karazakarak. Good luck to you too. Lovely, though that is a lot of grim go uh, a lot of grimgores, a lot of grimoires that we have used on it. Next up, let us take a look at what we've got in terms of our uh, in terms of our buildings. I don't think we have any new lattices coming up, but there's certainly stuff that we could level. Uh, Antok and Bagar, both of you would love to get your second tier up and running. Let's start with Antok because it feels a little bit safer being further away from enemies. Devil's Backbone, you're being sieged, so nothing to do there. Good here, good-ish here. I'd love to upgrade Karak Zorn, but I'm not willing to pay for it right now. Rosetra, you need a Lattice. Uh, yes. Lattice is there. Alamia, okay, you're gonna take a while to upgrade. In fact, we're just going to allow you to keep growing at your current rate. Southern Jungles looks good to me. Aha, uh -huh. let's get more money out of this from the Lost Athenaeum. Then, how much is this costing us? 2,000 gold per turn. If we can avoid that, which it looks like we might be able to, I think we're better off just building up another tier 5. Let's do that. More money from these after all, even if it isn't a crazy amount. Now this will drop our public order by a total of 4. We're currently at what? We're currently at 51. So it'll go down to minus... Yeah, it'll be fine. Even if it's all... Even if they're all in orange rather than in green. And the happy populace doesn't actually do anything for us. Because who cares about the growth... Once we're done, yeah, five recruitment costs, then campaign line of sight, but those aren't good enough to make it worth our while. 
Yeah, screw it. Uh, let's go for Dimensional Cascade on you as well. There we go. That's the fourth one, I believe. And we got two more. And then we'll be golden for a while. Okie dokie. Now, Kairos, you actually did level up in fighting Tic Tac, didn't you? And in fact, you're maxed out. You're at level 50. Now, we do have to figure out where we want to spend all of those points. One point we know for sure is going into an incendiary ascent, because uh, while well, you're getting buffs for your... Uh, uh, for your flamers of various varieties. Hmm. Iridescent horrors, yada yada yada. Now I'm just thinking, we have four points remaining. Somebody did suggest we get points into, I don't remember, it was either Reckoning of Transmogrification or Control Through Confusion, I think. Both of those would be very useful, I don't disagree. Hmm. But we only have four points remaining. The Fragment of Azir is kind of irrelevant. The Fragment of Shaman could be relevant. But the thing is, it's base weapon and armor-piercing weapon damage. It ignores missile damage. These guys are all going to be gone from this army eventually, because it's going to be a primarily ranged army. So while that would benefit the Lords of Changed, as well as the Soul Grinders in here, it wouldn't really do anything for the rest of our units. Which I'm not super happy with. Which might mean Fragment of Shaman may be skippable. Alternatively, we'd have to choose between the Fragment of Azir and Fragment of Shaman. The thing is, Fragment of Azir can only be acquired by Kairos, whereas we could get Fragment of Shaman via a uh, uh, via a Lore of Metal Iridescent Horror if we want to pop one into Kairos' army. And I do want two of them in here for the Burning Chariot purposes. In fact, Teratus, you're a Lore of Zinch? Yeah, you're a Lore of Zinch for Firestorm of Zinch. Uh, but uh, we could get the second one to be a Lore of Metal one, if we really wanted to. Hmm. You know, I'll think about it, but uh, that does seem like the way to go. Let's hold on to Kairos' points for now. It's not like we need to change anything from what his current army is. It sounds like we're really threatened by anything. Anyway, we've spent all our cash. We're going to skip the rest of this, buildings and points and whatnot. And let's see if Thorag decides to attack us, or whether he will wait here until Garrulus kills him. Looks like... Scarbrand did something- oh wow. I thought Scarbrand would manage to take Agrul Migdal, but apparently he failed with his own full stack against the basically non-existent March Stance garrison there? What are you doing, Scarbrand? <laughs> oh, it's kind of embarrassing. And don't worry, you're, you're, still, a good, you're, you're, you're still a good boy. Good job, Scarby. He's trying, guys. He's trying. Uh, defensive Alliance for you? No. How about you Confederate? No dice? Well then, no Defensive Alliance either. In fact, we should double check on Trade Settlement. I think it might have been available. Right of Awakening for Talakwa, a new Slan. Well, that's great for them, though a little bit late, most likely. Uh, looks like Iber, your ambush did not fail. But the enemy did nothing with it. Okay, now Kairos, you could move here, you could move here. Can we move to both? The problem is, you hit this guy, he's gonna move away, but if we don't kill him, he's just gonna move... Well, actually, he's going back to Na Nahuantl. Hmm. But if he goes to the Statues of the Gods, we can't do anything about that. Let's see. First of all, Questor. If you were to sail up this way, you could grab Nahuantl. Granted, you're, you're not going to be able to add any firepower to the fight, but this army is pretty darn weak, and you should be able to take... Which would free up Kairos to ignore this. That said, if once again he turns around and attacks us... You know what? Well, let's see how far he moves if we attack him here. Let's see what he does. He's going to move this way. Uh, yeah, we'll just take the turn. Squirrel, let's just kill the guy. Plus, you know, free slant souls are good. I wish that was a mechanic. I, I really feel like free slant souls for chaos units would... Uh, I don't know, would give some kind of special buff or something like that. Uh, but anyway, army replenished a little bit or a little bit of cash, either way, it doesn't matter. Ooh, look at that, we're down to 13,000 gold per turn only. Well, only. Uh, you, Kairos, you need to be able to reach this place. So let's put you into March Stance and put you right at the edge of our own territory. And we should be able to hit Suntree Glades from here next turn. And then you are going to join him right here. And what do we got back here? You're raiding at Orion's camp, eh? Can you attack Orion's camp? It's very possible. 
Hmm, might have to get a defensive little tiny garrison there, or in the alternative, move Iber Rune Smasher. To Orion's camp, or at least close to it. He might be able to attack it and sack it before we get there. I would imagine he can reach it this turn. Maybe we just summon a temporary lord there? I'm not sure yet. We'll figure that out shortly. Let's get Quaestor Paradoxium up here. Through Zlatlan and onto Nahuantl. And then you can take that and then transfer your troops to Iber. By moving through this territory. Though I guess Kairos will be the one to take Quexal and Suntree Glades and then move back this way. Yeah, maybe even meet up with Iber at Deadhead Monoliths instead. Go like this and then jump to here instead. As soon as Kairos moves up to the Plain of Tuskers, of course, he wouldn't be needed at... Uh, uh, as an Iber wouldn't be needed at Orion's camp or anything like that. Maybe that's the way to do it. We'll see. Now, you, Garrulus. First of all, Thorek, you can move all the way to here. Meaning we should move... Is there attrition everywhere? Well, there isn't here, but I fear that we wouldn't be able to reach Thorek if we... What if we go right here? We'll suffer a little bit of attrition. Hmm. I'm just wondering if this is worth it. We could go into Ambush, but I'm not 100% sure whether we can reach Thoric, and that's what has me concerned right now. We obviously can't go into March Stance, and Teleport Stance can move us a little bit further, but it would put us in range. On the other hand, hmm, it does make us immune to attrition. And the cost isn't horrible right now. You know what? Maybe that's the best way to do it. This will be in range of Thorak, but if he attacks us, I'm reasonably confident we can destroy him in the field, even if it would be a dangerous fight for us. Let's get you here, and let's see how he reacts. And if he doesn't go for us, then we'll get all, our all of our mana back. If he does go for us... Oh, wow. Actually, it's a pretty good army. Uh, it's a lot of artillery... And we only have two units of fury, is that? Hmm. Okay, that's actually a little bit concerning, but too late to do anything about it. Now we're committed. Uh, let's get you... There's nothing helpful here, is there? Let's get you Kindle Flame, but uh, yeah, not against the dwarfs. Hmm. 65 spell resistance? At least 35 on the weaker units, but damn. And huh, the entire army has Frenzy? Why does the entire army have Frenzy? I take it that's something Thorak does? I don't even remember. Oh, wait, no, that's passive ability for Frenzy for you specifically, not for your army. Yeah, I guess it is something that uh, he does. Oh, well, uh, we'll see if he attacks. Ball is in his court now. Okay, now we do have once again money to spend. We can't attack anybody else this turn. I guess the only question is whether we summon a Templar at Orion's camp just in case. I guess since it's a Templar, it can't hurt. Let's go with... I don't like any of these. Herald of Zinch, Strong, Channeler, Concatenator, Corrupter, and Fleet-Footed. I guess we'll go Strong if we were to turn you into an Exalted Lord of uh, Change, even though still we wouldn't necessarily be wanting to drop you down. The extra armor from Strong is quite worth our time. So yeah, let's do that. Vindex. Put you here. And we'll see what this guy does. If he goes for the Golden Tower, then no dice, uh, no thread, rather. And in fact, you know what we can do? Let's go Changing of the Ways. We will go Reveal Faction Intentions on Cult of Sigmar. Let's see what they're intending to do. This guy, he is intending to go for Begar, but he might stop at Orion's camp on the way. So actually, that doesn't tell us much, does it? Okay, well, back to buildings, shall we? Also, we have a lot of negative public court out, but that's in new territories. That is, you know, not necessarily surprising. Okay, keep it as it is then. Uh, Teotiqua, Devil's Backbone, all of you have your stuff, but you need a lattice, Granite Massive. There we go. Though you may get attacked by Thorek shortly. Now, what's up next? No lattices available. Ah, yes there is. There's one right there. And we should probably get the Swall up to tier 4, but we can probably hold off on it for a little bit of a while, especially with Grimgore distracted, as he currently is. Alright, that looks good to me. And that looks good to me in terms of cash, yes. Yes, and yes. Okay, now... 
Is there a tier 5 left? Wait, shouldn't we... Isn't the Lost Palace... Did we ever upgrade the Lost Palace? No, we did not. Okay, so that's gonna be you. Dimensional Cascade for you, please. And now that's it. That's all of our cash. And then soon, as soon as all those are leveled up, we'll start building military buildings everywhere at reduced cost. And then that'll propel us forward with uh, mightier armies as we go north. Now... Do we want to trade the settlement by force? It will problematically cause these guys to lose their war, most likely. Actually, are you fighting anybody else? No, it's just these two against these two. You know what? Let's let's give it some time. Let's wait a little bit. I don't want the Ghost of Pahwaks to declare war on us while we uh, get a transferred settlement, mostly because it will require another stack there that we just don't have right now. And I'd rather keep gaining money, rather than uh, losing it with another stack. We've already dropped significantly. Let's skip the rest of this, and then we'll see. Will Thoric attack Garrulus? Will Thoric attack Karago Rud? Moment of truth. I really wish the camera wouldn't pan away like that. Queek, what you want, buddy? You want us to join war against Grimgorn? No, no, thank you, but no. I do want you to kill Kazrak, though, because he's kind of a threat to our interior territories. Honestly, I feel like Grimgor is going to declare war on us at some point anyway. Kazrak, I do wonder what you were doing back there. And Thorek is towards the edge of this. Oh, no, he's already moved. Oh, he ran away. <laughs> ah, Thorek. Garrulus just wanted to fight, man. Ally begins outpost construction, clan moors, yeah, that's swell for them. Halt faction is now available. Master of Puppets control plus 30 in... Which province? Fortress of Dawn. Well, that's great, not that it does anything for us right now. Let's give this a quick read, though. Without warning, nine city-sized blue and yellow runes manifest in the sky. The moment they disappear, the same rune carves itself into the left cheek of all who witnessed it. We've already seen that one, or read it. Lord Conjurer. Now... If we were to haul to this faction, we could catch up and kill Thorak. The question is whether we want to. You know what we do want to do? Alaris, you're out. And then Garrulus, you're gonna go here and you're gonna go into ambush with the hopes that Thorak comes back. If a siege is Death Gorge, then we will uh, we'll chase after him. We'll see what he does. I don't want to waste halt to faction on this guy. I'm surprised that he ran from Garrulus, to be perfectly honest. He doesn't seem strong enough to uh, have capitalized on that. Now, Hans, you may attack Antok or Bagar. Which is kind of concerning. We could send you to defend it. Hey, it's Volkmar. Hmm, I wonder if he'll try to attack the Golden Tower, but if he tries, he'll fail. Okay, well, regardless, we're gonna send Kairos to the Sun Tree Glades now. And that should be an auto resolve. Good. And occupy the place. Hey, a Talisman of Endurance. What does Kairos have again? He has the Obsidian Amulet. Yes, okay. Talisman of Endurance it is. We're always having Kairos getting hit by stuff. Honestly, he really needs some better items. Uh. Hell of Discord is good, but we need an Armor of Destiny on him. Or for him, it should be renamed Armor of Fate. Uh, Sun Tree Glades, you don't need one of these Warpstone Loci, and we can uncollect the income for now, because as soon as Kairos is gone, the place is going to be a little bit unhappy about things. Quixotl, you're Tier 4, so we can capture a Tier 3. I do wonder if the forces of Volkmar are going to move back, but just in case they don't, I think what we need to do is move you to Antok, move you to Orion's camp. Like so. It might mean Bagar will fall, but if it does, it does. I don't see... Uh, I don't see the real need to keep it. We can always take it back. We just don't have enough armies at this stage. But then you are gonna grab this sea corpse and then land at Nahuantl and then move on to Deadhead Monoliths. There we go. Loot the carcass and auto-resolve. A little bit more damage than I'd like, but what can you do? Let's heal up a little bit. Are we in controlled or contested seas? I guess we're in contested, aren't we? Yeah. But hey, 8,000 money? Pretty darn worth it. Now, you should, in theory, be able to reach this, but let's just move you out in march stance just in case we're in full speed stance. And just to guarantee it. And then... 
Root Marcher, Inspiring Pr... No. Uh, Blue Fires of Zinch and then Pink Fires of Zinch. In fact, we can skip on Root Marcher for this particular situation. If we fight, we want Pink Fires to be able to be maxed out. And though I doubt we should need to fight. You never know. Okay, that looks good to me. Teratus, see you. We're supposed to join Kairos. Uh, the thing is, I don't know what to replace with you because we need these guys until we get our... Uh, uh, until we get our Soul Grinder on our heavier units. We could replace one of the units of Pink Horrors, unfortunate as that may be. And I do want to keep the Flyers here for now, though we will delete them later, or rather we will transfer them to someone else later. But they're quite useful at the current time. Yeah, I think the only thing we can do is delete one of the Pink Horrors, unfortunately. Oh well, not a big deal. Let's do this. And put that pink whore in here. And then you're gonna be a burning chariot pink whore. And then we'll get another one doing the same thing. And the only thing we'll have to figure out is if we want to go double up on Locus of Transmog or Locus of Change. I'm inclined to go with the Locus of Change mostly because this is gonna be a primarily ranged army. And flying army. Decent amount of flying units, but lots of elites. That's for sure. Alrighty, well, Iber and Co., you guys can't move. Orion's Camp, you can get an upgrade. Uh, do we go for the control, honestly? I was originally going to use this to go for uh, Zinchen Corruption nearby. But at this point, it's looking like it won't be needed. Everywhere is going to be Zinchenly Corrupted without the help of the... Uh, without the help of the gate or the dimensional breach. So we could just get the uh, Infernal Citadel in instead to reduce costs of upgrade. Yeah, fine. Let's do that. Okay, what else do we have here? Oh, first of all, you are about to be upgraded, which means you no longer need these growth buildings. And in fact, I just want to double check, we deleted the growth buildings here, and we did here as well. Yes, 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 and ah, tier 5, good. No growth buildings left in the Lost Palace, and none left in Occam's Forever Maze. Perfection. Alrighty, well this does mean we can start building some important stuff in Eye of Terror. Ah yes, access to Chosen and Doom Knights, that's glorious. Only 6k at that. Now I think that the port is obviously the most important thing to get right now because it's money, but uh, we'll see about other stuff. Speaking about other stuff, Western Jungles, we're good for now to Lakwa. Devil's Backbone, ah, Lattices, yes. Karagorud, you are not being attacked anymore, therefore... I guess you get your own lattice. Golden Pass, Teotihuacan. Oh, damn, we have to upgrade you as well. <laughs> okay, we could do that right now. Assuming that there's no other... Ah, there is another lattice, isn't there? I guess we could skip a turn for a lattice. Just the one, though. Presuming that we have enough to do this next turn as well. Okay, fine. Where's Teotihuacan? Is that the Golden Pass? Yes. And then you can switch to Dimensional Cascade as well. Which also means we no longer need you or you. And then next turn it will be... Who again? Something here. Temple of Skulls. Yes, yes. And just gotta remember to do that as well. Okay, well at least we'll be getting some money back from all of the... Uh, uh, all of the growth stuff that we're deleting. Now you. We have Way of Manipulation Halt Faction now. I didn't forget to do a tech last turn, did I? I hope not. Hmm. What do we go for next? I did want to get Break Alliance, which seems quite useful. What do we still need for this? Temporal Switch and Way of Fate. Uh, Temporal Switch is one of them, and then Way of Fate is... here. Gift War Coordination Target. Yeah, alright. I really want that Teleportation Stance upgrade. And I also want that damn Exalted Locus of Conjuration, but the frickin' Glean Magic is just so hard to get without a Tier 5 building. As in, you know, impossible. Okay, looks like another end turn to me. Hopefully we don't spend the entire uh, episode looking for a cinematic battle. I'm very disappointed that uh, Thorak decided not to attack or to fight Garrulus. I mean, this is still a very basic army in many ways. So I don't know what he's talking about. Just fight Garrulus. It's not like you're facing off against Kairos or Iber, who you should be afraid of at this point. Anyway, skip those unassigned skill points and wait. Unholy Manifestation, Mutagenic Energies. Do we want to do this to, for example, Volkmar? Ooh, he's going to attack this. Yes, we do. 
Yes, we do want to do that to Volkmar. It's not going to do too much, but it may force him into something. I don't think he'll be able to win this. We should just be able to overrun him. Blue Horrors and Melee should still be able to defeat Crossbows, I would think. Though I haven't tested the theory, to be perfectly honest. And now uh, we don't have anybody in enemy provinces, so we can't use our uh, our other unholy manifestation. Oh well. Ah, Ghost of Pahwax, you're gonna attack this? How about that uh, confederation? No, it's even less likely now. They need to lose their armies. Fair enough. I believe that's another end turn then. Alrighty. Somebody attack us, please. Let's see what you got. <laughs> Scarby, come on, man. <laughs> Get your army back up and running and uh, try not to fail this time. I hope his capital doesn't get taken by Thorak, though. That would be really unfortunate. Alrighty, ambush, and oh, wow, the ambush didn't fail, and he's in march stance. That's disgusting. That is disgusting, Garrulus. You disgust me in the best way possible. Let's do this cinematically. Lots of ambushes lately, eh? Alrighty, here we go. Should be a fun time. Thorax got a pretty damn solid army, and we are surrounding him uh, via this ambush. I suppose another episode, another ambush, and uh, let's make sure that this works for us. Unlike the um, unlike the ambush we did with Kairos against Tic Tac Toe in the I want to say previous episode or the episode before that, uh, this one's a little bit easier because we simply group up our entire army and then tell them all to attack at the same time, rather than. Uh, Rather than Kairos' army, which is a little bit more and difficult to control, though it's still not quite perfect. As uh, I didn't group the uh, cultist into this, nor the uh, nor the spawn, so they're not yet moving, but they will eventually. Anyway, the entire blob of enemy artillery. How many units is this, by the way? Four, five pieces of artillery, all immediately getting surrounded by chaos furies from every side, as well as the uh... oh, that's the escape box I was talking about uh, before. Yeah, surrounded by four units of Forsaken as well. I want all of these damn artillery pieces gone immediately, and that's a significant amount of firepower that uh, we take from the enemy right away. Also, it looks like our Forsaken unfortunately got hit with a set of blasting charges from the enemy miners, although we are now charging in to attack them. I'm getting a blue fire right into the middle of the blob, and it does actually work fairly decently when the enemy is sufficiently blobbed up. I right, gotta love those discs. A lovely for positioning those blue fires of Zinch, and here comes another one into the uh, uh, into the Iron Breakers this time. Now these are the two units, or two out of the three units that are most threatening on the entire field. Thorak, of course, with his ludicrous clad brocac ability, uh, which is extremely good against blobs, and then of course the Iron Breakers, which are going to be tough to bring down, and then lastly the Giant Slayers, which are over here, and will be able to dish out tons and tons of damage, if nothing else, and are very dangerous to our spawn, who don't in fact want to be engaged with all these Slayers. Uh, they will instead be, uh, they will instead be going after anything else so that they don't get killed by them. I also decided to charge our Chaos Sorcerer Garrulus into the Iron Breakers to distract them for the Chaos Warriors to close the distance such that the uh, the enemy couldn't use their blasting charges against them in the same way and that they use them against the uh, the Forsaken. And there we go. And now these guys are nicely tied up. Over on this side, our single unit of Chaos Warriors is going to have to hold off a lot of units of Slayers, though we are now getting support from our Pink Warriors from here and from the side as well. We're actually going to move these guys shortly so we can attack these guys from mostly the side, as we don't want to uh, do too much damage to our own units. Still, this is probably the best way to deal with these Slayers. Rather than sending our, uh, rather than sending our spawn to die trying, I really don't want to risk them there. Alrighty, gaze of fate going down on those iron breakers, <laughs> putting them down to a mere eleven melee. Attack. Granted, it's a defensive unit, so they're meant to hold the line, not so much dish out crazy amounts of damage, uh, but uh, nonetheless, that's real helpful. And otherwise, the enemy has a giant pile of units in the center here and that we do still have to overwhelm. They're holding quite admirably. On top of that, the uh, 
And yeah, there it is. And this is allowing the enemy to repeatedly use that Clag Brokak bombardment ability, which really does hurt. Look at this Forsaken unit, uh, basically done for already, and we're actually going to back it up so that it doesn't die. Fortunately, at least the enemy artillery is also done for, and we can take advantage of that fact by not having to worry about them. Oh, there we go, that lovely Zinshin Doombolt coming down. And right into the center, well, maybe not quite the center, but uh, hitting quite a few of those Slayers. Unfortunately for our Chaos Warriors, they've been very, very badly beat up at this stage already, down to only 24 units and maybe 10-15% to 15 HP. Though the enemy Slayers are taking damage from 4 units of Pink Horrors, there were 4 or 5 units of Slayers here, and it is going to take quite a while to bring them down. In addition to that, we need to send in the uh, Forsaken here to essentially distract them long enough for the Pink Horrors to continue doing their work. Alrighty, there we go. Nice little crossfire from those pink horrors, though. Really helping out here. And another one of those damn bombardments coming down. Uh, the dwarfs may not have magics, but with Clad Brakak available to Thorek, they may as well have. Fortunately, over on this side, the last of the Dawi in a ring are trying desperately to hold, and it doesn't look like they're going to pull it off. In fact, most of them appear to be at the very least wavering. In fact, a few of them are terrified as well. Shaken, wavering, terrified. Uh, exhausted on those dwarf warriors. Nice. And the Sundered Armor, I t where's the Sundered Armor coming from? Oh, it's from the Weird Spawn. Ah, the Spawn of Zinch. The regular Spawn of Zinch also caused Sundered Armor. I gotta remember that. We do seem to struggle a little bit with this army in particular. I mean, considering how long it took these guys to go down, maybe not the Miners, uh, but the uh, Longbeards and stuff. And imagine later on when we're facing off against more and more Iron Breakers, like over here. They've been fighting for ages and they've still got 70 out of 100 models, even with the armor sundering of the spawn and them getting hit in the back. That's really... Uh, yeah, well, I mean, it's supposed to be a very tough unit, but we do need to have some kind of answers for it. And of course, Thorek as well. He's got 210 armor, and he's got... Let me just see here. He's off. Oh, the love of... Just let me select. <laughs> Thank you. He's got... Where is it? 105 spell resist. 45... Uh, 25 physical, 45 missile, but the frickin' spell resist makes him basically immune to spells altogether. So we need to bring him down somehow. Maybe surround him with spawn, but even with the armor sundering. Ooh, minus 30. 210 armor minus 30. That's great. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely need lots of armor piercing damage. And the spawn don't do nearly as much as you'd think, even with their armor sundering. But anyway... Regardless of that, the battle is over, though Thorek is still going strong. The rest of his army, not so much. There's a few Slayers to still knock down here, um, but uh, they should drop shortly via concentrated fire from those Pink Horrors. And it looks like we won't have to deal with Thorek, because as long as the rest of his army is dead, he's not unbreakable, and thus we can, uh, we can just chase him off. And down go the last Slayers. Well done to the Pink Horrors for uh, ripping them apart, though clearly we've taken some damage in this particular battle. Uh, that unit of Forsaken, that unit of Forsaken, that unit of Forsaken are all down to like 10 for, to 15% HP. Aldebrand, our cultist, nearly died uh, because he was in the center of the line here. Definitely got to be careful with him. And uh, our Lord got a little bit beat up, but otherwise we're mostly okay. No, wait, there's another unit of Forsaken that's nearly dead. And of course this unit of Chaos Warriors that held the line. Closer than I'd like, I gotta say. We may not have lost units, but uh, we certainly took some damage. And I was out of, just out of curiosity, I decided to send our weird spawn, as well as our Lord, to just try to attack Thorek a little bit to see how much damage we could do. And when he's isolated like this, he was certainly taking some damage, but once again, not nearly as much as I'd like. Nah. Very tough unit. Very impressive. He really needed some more quarrelers in his uh, army, considering how much uh, he can buff them pretty insanely, can't he? Although, uh, last time I played Thorak was an SFO, I don't know exactly how much damage they uh, 
they can do at max with all his buffs in vanilla, but in SFO, I had the Quarlers doing something like 200 missile damage, which is pretty ridiculous for a, uh, uh, for a missile unit with high numbers, especially a relatively early game missile unit. But anyway, Pyrrhic victory, but well worth it. Poor Thora getting himself into an ambush. All right, well, it was certainly a victory, but uh, it was a lot tougher than it could have been. I, uh, I'm actually curious as to how this battle would have turned out if we had thought, uh, fought Thorek not in an ambush, as the uh, uh, all the artillery would have been able to do something as opposed to absolutely nothing. That said... Cladbrakak, that uh, bombardment ability, range damage 1344, all armor piercing, magical damages, very, very strong, isn't it? He got 93 kills and 18,000 damage by himself. I think he got more kills or more damage than every single unit of his army combined, with the exception of, I think, this one unit of longbeards with great weapons. Still, yeah, that's... Uh, that's very impressive, Thorak, and also because of his armor and his massive spell resistance, he's just impossible to bring down himself. But this army, hmm, it may need a retrofit. And just judging by that, they have a lot of trouble dealing with armor. And obviously, while the Forsaken are kind of fragile, when I say kind of, I mean really fragile. So even though this is probably still going to be our Forsaken army, we may need to retool it a little bit. Maybe some chosen with uh, halberds for the armor? Hmm, we'll see. Uh, now, we will take the money this time, I think, because we're still in our friendly territory and Thorica's army is done. Yeah, let's take the money. Alrighty, Grimgore, not declaring war on us right now. Too busy, perhaps, with all the stuff that you're fighting. Uh, Kazrak, we need to keep an eye on Kazrak. He could enter our territories where, uh, where we don't have walls. This is why I wanted to ally. Okay, it's one of the reasons I wanted to ally with the Beastmen. Because they're just so annoying to deal. Oh my lord, that's a nice defeat trait. What the? Okay. Uh, huh. Now, that's a very nice defeat trait. Damn, Thorak, you're still alive, right? I want this on Kairos. I want this on... Iber. I want this on everybody. The 15% magic item was drop chance, considering that we are lacking in items right now. A, and the armor piercing weapon damage plus three. We were just having trouble with armor piercing. This would be really good on Iber's infantry armor, army as well. Damn. All right, well, oh, no. Grizzguts. You're probably going to attack this, aren't you? I will not. I want Thorak to survive. You know, what if we... How much would it cost to halt this faction? Changing of the ways. Halt faction. Uh, bloody hands. 250. Okay, it's actually not that expensive. You know what? We're gonna halt the faction. I know this is kind of a waste of that ability, but the fact is... I really don't want them to kill this. Too bad it's only for one turn, and the cooldown is at seven, but still. Do you take me for a Will you be able to defend this? That's what I'm wondering. And depending on how many units you can get in there in a single uh, in a single round of recruitment. Also, we need somebody to deal with this. Maybe we actually send Garrulus to fight some beastmen. He's no longer needed here, at least until we begin fighting with Kemri. Huh. All right, you know what? You're going to move through allied territories, and you're going to go through it in... Let's say ambush or in camp. We don't know what's in this army exactly. Hmm. Let's go for ambush. Let's say something like this. I doubt that he's going to go for Death Gorge, but he very well might go for Floating Village. Ambush stands for you. I tell... Uh, I tell Scarbrand to attack these guys, but Scarbrand keeps losing. Damn. Surprisingly an effective faction. Maybe all the uh, all the surrounding areas are too good against Cornate units in particular, but I'm a little bit shocked at that. As Cornate units are quite good without uh, without needing too much uh, too much with their armies. But anyway, Vindex, you stay here. And you know what? Just for a little while have some blue horrors in here as well to help you defend. 
as you move between these two territories. You, Iber, you don't need to do anything. Just stay here. As long as you stay here, the enemy won't attack. Kairos, you need to hit Quexotl. Uh, oh, you could just reach this little army here. Then we can go for Quexotl next turn. Yeah, fine. Fine, I'd rather get rid of the army and then we get rid of the uh, of the territory after that. Suntree Glades, you will need... Well, actually, being an interior territory, you most likely won't need walls. Uh, let's get the heal for now. Because we'll be auto-resolving further. And then we'll see what Volkmar does off the base of this. If he goes to Golden Tower, he's dead. Most likely he's gonna march stance and move this way. That's what I expect from him. But then, what's he gonna do afterwards? That's the real question for him. Anyway, Questor. You have a quest. Go and attack Nahuantl. Uh, I do want you to land right beside it. And attack it. There we go. Auto resolve. Beautiful. A little bit of damage, but that's fine, and occupy the place. And we don't need the many-eyed tribute here. Suntree Glades, just go for the Lattice for now. As long as Volkmar doesn't come here, we'll be fine. And then, once again, it's Quexotl remaining, just like when the Leafcutters tribe held it, and now we hold it. Uh, it does look like these guys are building back up, so we do have to be careful about them reclaiming Talakwa, though it does have walls, so I don't imagine they will be able to do so easily. Otherwise, I think we're looking good. Okie dokie, I say probably one more turn. Iber, you, well, you have to stay here. Until we're, we've dealt with Volkmar, and then meet up with Quaestor over here at Deadhead Monoliths. And that'll work out. Then I guess we turn to the buildings to build once more. Lots of admin. Uh, Western jungles, we're looking good here. Devil's Backbone, yes, a new lattice. No new lattices here, Golden Pass. I deleted something in Teotihuacan, but there's nothing we, that we really need to replace it with right now. Funnily enough, we could probably replace some several of these places with the uh, with the control buildings to keep them in positive control. But once again, I don't see any reason to. You know, we'll see what we have left after building all the military buildings, because technically, the one, two, three, four. There are four main territory military buildings that could be built, but two of them don't increase our capacity in anything, so they don't need to be built everywhere. So maybe, maybe the public order will be okay. Uh, Crater of the Walking Dead, you are looking good minus that lattice, there we go. Zlatlan looks good. Temple of Skulls, yes, let's get you to that dimensional cascade. And damn the expense. Alrighty, we're looking good here. And here, wait, 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 jungles, yes, okay, we're good. Good, and good, we're almost ready to start militarizing everything, or at least uh, several territories. Libaras, I do want you to get your walls up and running right now, though. We don't know whether somebody could attack. We'll probably end up deleting the walls out of Mahrak and Resetra, and probably these territories as well, as soon as we get rid of the Beastmen and move forward. Destiny. Yeah, alrighty, that looks good. Let's then... Muse on Holy Manifestation on anybody? No. Alas, not. Alright, let's skip the rest of this then. Building upgrades, etc, etc, and the turn. And let's see what Volkmar does. I have absolutely no clue what the hell Scarbrand's armies think they're doing. And there's a freaking uh, a freaking Beastman horde in the middle of their territory. Still no war with us, eh, Grimgore? I'm gonna check back on Grimgore and see what his strength rank is, if it's still number one after that uh, war declaration, because now he's fighting like a dozen factions. In addition to the dwarves. Uh, technology researched, iridescent cores, but it's the temporal switch that we want. Whispering walls, so additional zinch and corruption in the Golden Tower, which doesn't do anything for us. Uh, Volki, your army is trash, and we can probably just... Kill it instantly. Let's just auto-resolve this. Goodbye, Volkmar. Wait. You have Grimsbane. Uh, yeah, nobody else can reach us. Okay, fine. Kill this. Enemy failed to spot your ambush, I would certainly think so. We teleported right on top of them, and there we go. Auto-resolve that. 
We've already defeated much tougher armies than that with Kairos, and this is just all crossbows, so Kairos could kill all of most of this army himself, and possibly the entire army himself, if we include uh, spamming blue fires at Volkmar. And though I don't remember what exactly his, uh, uh, his spell defense is. Alrighty, there we go, and now Volk, uh, Grimcore is fighting the Caravan of Blue Roses on top of all that. Well, either way, to Quexotl we go next. And that means Vindex, you're able to go to Bagar. Iber, you're able to go to Antok. And you are going to try to reclaim the statues of the gods. But, wait, Quaestor, can you reach this? No. No, you cannot, at least not in a single bound. Alright, fine, go here. Do we summon a temporary lord there? We could delete Vindex just for that purpose, although I'm not super inclined to necessarily do so. Garrulous, ah! Alrighty, well, you're gonna be able to most likely attack this guy. In fact, you can teleport on top of this little beastman faction and attack them with another one of these uh, ambushes, but I think we'll have to save that for next time, as it will have to be a cinematic battle. And then, oh, oh wow. Look, they've taken Karakazgal. They've actually taken it as a settlement. I wanted to give you a free settlement, and instead you randomly declared war on us. What the hell, Kazrak? Ah, uh, I loved you, man, and you betrayed me. Well, anyway, as I said, we're gonna call it here, and next time we will most likely be destroying both Talakwa and the uh, Cult of Sigmar in a single episode. And though there are still a few territories remaining with our two armies here, it should be just fine. And then after that, we will also pursue the, uh, well, at the same time, I suppose, we'll pursue the Beastmen, and then we'll figure out what we do afterwards. Continuing probably to ignore Grimgor, most likely we'll be attacking Khemri, because they're kind of right in the middle of our own territory. And we might as well take all of Nehekar for ourselves. The only thing about that is, that is a consideration, is the fact that we're still at war with Arkan. And if we're at war with Arkan, and we could technically attack him first rather than Camry, and I do imagine Camry. Yeah, they're they're quite a bit weaker than Arcan is, most likely to losing territories. Hmm. All right. Well, regardless, it'll be something to consider, but we'll have to see next time. So stay tuned for more Kairos. Don't forget to leave a like and comment for your friendly neighborhood heretic. All glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.